say, as I belt on a higher note, for example, an F sharp, oh! or an A, oh! or a C, Training belt voice is super important. It is one of the most important things that you should do in your training routines and schedule. Because one thing that's cool about belt voice is not only does it sound cool when you get good at it, not only is it like it sounds great and it's what we all want to do better and we're all training to get to, but in the process of training belt voice because you want to sound better and be able to sing those high belty notes, that whole experience also builds great vocal strength because it's resistance training or requires resistance training. Belt voice sounds great. We all want it. Also is great vocal health. It makes you strong. So, in the four pillars of singing, we have several ways that you can train and get strong with your belt voice other than singing. There is a group of onsets in our eight specialized onsets. Uh, four of them are resistance training onsets. Four of the eight are what I call coordination and tuning onsets. The coordination and tuning onsets are there for coordinating muscle movements, for tuning the vowel, tuning the pitch. Um, they are precision work on sets. Very important group. Belt uh, mode is trained well with the resistance training on sets. A group of on sets that are primarily used to build muscular strength. Those onsets are the dampen and release onset, the attack and release onset, the contract and release onset, and in some regards, the quack and release onset as well, although a little bit less than the other three. The quack and release onset is unique. It sits in both groups. It's both a coordination and tuning onset as well as a resistance training onset. So your most pure belt onsets to train would be dampen and release, attack and release, and contract and release. In particular, dampen and release and attack and release. And if I were to be biased and prejudiced about this, I'd say glottal attacks, attack and release onsets. No other onset will build your belt strength like good solid attack and release onsets. What's an attack and release onset? Well, there's a very detailed, long demonstration of it in the attack and release onset uh, video lesson later on in the program. But just to show you a few times here, this would be an attack and release onset. Is it, it is in a glottal attack, a chaotic crash of the vocal folds. And you might think that that is unhealthy. There are some voice teachers that will tell you that it is, but it's not. Um, it's actually, if it's done right, properly, it is a very healthy thing to do. This is a attack and release onset. A, 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 C5. All right. Some of you might think or conclude that that hurts me or it's unhealthy. Not at all. I really don't feel anything. It's quite benign, actually. I just feel a lot of air pressure and resonance in my body. So that's just a quick demonstration of an attack and release onset glottal attacks, which are really great for training the strength of belt voice. And there's more detail on that in another lesson. In a discussion about belting 
and uh, training belting, I should also add that there is a risk. Clearly, those onsets, those belts that I was just giving, with, giving you, they might sound cool, you might like them. I, I hope you did, I did, they were fun to do. But they're risky, there's a risk there. In particular, new students, beginner students that don't already have the strength and the coordination that you get from these coordination and tuning onsets that I was referring to and practicing and doing other things that need to happen. If you don't build a foundation, then diving straight into these glottal attacks is a huge risk and you could hurt yourself and I don't recommend it. Voice coaches that train and teach a doctrine to everybody that buys their product to immediately start belting, to immediately do a frontal assault straight to the passaggio, are leaving a wake of destruction behind them. Diving straight into belt techniques without first being able to sing and pitch, make a nice beautiful onset, shape your embouchure, tune the formant, buzz on some nasal consonants and warm up, learn how to bridge, learn any, learning how to get other coordination involved first, building a foundation, diving into glottal attacks before you've built a foundation is extremely risky. And many of you that have done this know exactly what I'm talking about. About 10% of new students will be able to succeed in that way. Most of you will not. You'll just end up getting more choky and more pushy. You'll just increase the problems that you're trying to solve. So belt voice, very important, extremely important. We all want it. It sounds great and it's really fantastic for getting strong and singing your songs. However, you have to be ready for it first before you can begin to belt. So that is your introduction to belting. I hope I've done a fair job of explaining what it is, and not only explaining what it is with some interesting circle talk buzzwords, but really explaining what it is. The musculature, the acoustics, and what defines it and characterizes a good belt, and why it's great, why we all love it, and what the risks are. Now, all of this is explained in great detail in the four pillars of singing in this training system here. Um, if you're just seeing this for the first time, the red pages on this book is training content. That is all training routines that are coordinated and synced up with piano scales, demonstrations, and workouts. It's about 150 pages of tables of onsets and training. So if you want to get serious, if you want to train and really learn how to do this, and if you want to belt, for sure, you have to go to work. This is a program that will show you how to do it. Those of you that are already on board, I give you a salute and let's carry on to the next lesson.